Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So hello and welcome to all. Uh, welcome to Research Circle and welcome for today's session. So the topic for today's uh, webinar is uh, outcome-based education for engineering education towards sustainable development. And for this, we have with us our today's expert, uh, Mr. Mohibul Haq Buyan, and he's uh, become a member of World Academic of Science, Engineering and Technology in 2005 born in Dhaka, Bangladesh on 25 July, 1972. He did his BSc, MSc and PhD degree in electrical and electronic engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, currently he's working as a professor of department of electrical and electronic engineering of Southeast University, Dhaka, Bangladesh. He lead this department as the departmental chairman from 1st March 2016 to 10th March 2021. Previously, he worked at the Green University of Bangladesh, Dhaka, as a professor and chairman of Tripoli e Department, uh, Defodil in, uh, International University, Dhaka, Bangladesh, as an assistant professor and head of ETE uh, Department, Presidency University, Dhaka, Bangladesh, as an assistant professor and American International University, Bangladesh, uh, Dhaka as a faculty member since June 1999. He also worked as a researcher in Center for Excellence program in Hiroshima University, Japan from July 2003 to March 2004. He has served as an adjunct faculty at AU, AUST, IIUC, EWU, DIU and PU, etc. So far, he has published over 60 plus research paper uh, in national and international journals and presented over 50 research works at the national and international conferences. Yeah, yeah. So without wasting further time, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Mohibul, sir. Please continue, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. William, uh, for your nice introduction. So today is the topic of presentation is outcome-based education for engineering education for uh, towards the sustainable development. Okay. So as Mr. William Trott has mentioned that I am Professor Mohibul Hagbuya, currently working as the professor of Tripoli department at Southeast University. And I was the former chair for, for the last five years. And during that time, I uh, have changed a lot in the curriculum and I have converted the traditional curriculum into the outcome-based education uh, curriculum. Uh, that is, in short, it is called OBE. So OBE curriculum we, we have converted and uh, that's why I have gained lots of experience uh, on it. And uh, this OBE is needed. Uh, now, many universities in the world have adopted this and many accreditation agencies uh, have uh, given emphasis on this uh, uh, system that is OBE based education system. So uh, this is a new topic and uh, also uh, um, an emerging topic. Uh, and we, we should uh, uh, adopt this topic for not only for the engineering education, but also for the other, other education uh, like in commerce background or arts and social science and other in, uh, educational disciplines. And uh, this is not only applicable for the universities, but also for the schools and colleges also. So th uh, that's why we, we have uh, chosen this topic. And this is also needed for the sustainable development. How OBE is related to sustainable development, that will be the main focus of today's webinar. So let me switch and this is the webinar 
uh, I mean, banner that was sent by Mr. William. And this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, uh, I will discuss on SDG and OBE, then why this OBE is related in relation to the program accreditation that will be discussed. And some of the components will be discussed, like OBE-based curriculum development, uh, CO, what is COP, OPEO, and their mapping techniques, and domain of teaching and learning uh, based on Bloom's taxonomy, and how the questions are set, how the assessment evaluation tools are used, and uh, what, are, what is rubrics, and how rubrics are used for assessment and evaluation. And finally, I will conclude uh, with some recommendations. So what is education? Education is all about making a person a good human being. That is the purpose of education is to make the educate, uh, make a human being a uh, good human being. Not uh, We do not actually give knowledge to the students. A person may be a, a knowledgeable person, but he, not, he may not be a good human being. So we want good human beings uh, who are needed for your uh, family, for the society, for the nation, and for the well-being of other human beings. So we need such type of people through the educational system. That is the main objective of education. So OB means starting with a, a clear picture of what is important for students to be able to do, and then organizing the curriculum instruction and assessment to make sure that this learning is ultimately uh, happen. And by SDG, uh, SDG means sustainable development goal. In short, we call it SDG. And uh, some countries under the, actually not some, all the, all the uh, member countries uh, under the United Nations uh, in 2015, they had adopted that uh, these uh, sustainable goals. That is, they want to achieve these goals by 2030. And uh, these goals were uh, 17, 17 SDGs. We call it uh, 17 sustainable development goals. And out of these 17 goals, some of the goals are related directly to the education. Uh, though we need education for uh, to achieve all these goals, but in some goals, for example, in SDG 4, we see that it mentions quality education. So we must ensure quality education uh, and uh, to achieve the uh, sustainable uh, development for a country, for a nation. So we need this. And for engineering education, is there any other goal which is related? For example, we need uh, affordable and clean energy. That is, uh, uh, clean energy means uh, low car carbon emission, low greenhouse gas emission. So to make this, we need sustainable uh, energy system. And that is why engineers have some, uh, I mean, um, they have some uh, uh, role to play to uh, achieve these goals. And uh, to make those types of engineers, we need the quality education also. And uh, you see goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities. And this also requires engineers. Climate action, life below the water, life on land, etc. For So uh, actually all the, all the goals are related to education. And also you need the, the quality engineers to achieve these goals. Okay, for example, social, uh, uh, who, the students who are in the social science background, uh, you need uh, gender equality, equality and uh, you need to work on uh, uh, clean water and sanitation systems. So for this, you need, you need the um, proper human being, trained human being, so that they can uh, play their roles in achieving these goals. Basically, I will focus on quality education and affordable and clean energy because these are directly related to the OBE, outcome-based education, and these are the inverted form of the SDGs, uh, that is uh, 
uh, that were obtained uh, from this and mainly um, um, for engineers uh, we need to emphasize on quality education affordable and clean uh, and clean energy industry innovation and infrastructure sdg number 9 sdg number 10, 11 is uh, uh, sustainable cities and communities and uh, in uh, quality education uh, that is in sdg 4 we see uh, there are many targets uh, that is by 2030 uh, target number 4.4 uh, substantially, it, they, uh, that is, we have to increase substantially the number of youth and adults who have relevant skills, including technical and vocational skills, employment, decent jobs, and uh, entrepreneurship. So, if we want to increase the skills, we need proper education system. And OBE actually can provide you that education systems. And by 2030, we have to ensure that all learners acquire uh, knowledge and skills. All learners, that is, uh, you cannot say that you have uh, 60 students and 50 will pass and 10 will fail, but all will have to, but someone will take more time, someone will take less time, but they have to acquire these knowledge and skills and needed to promote the sustainable development. Okay, so in sh short, actually, through the quality education, we have to ensure the inclusive inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And number seven goal is, we can see affordable and clean energy. So the world is making progress towards goal number seven with encouraging signs that energy is becoming more sustainable and widely available. So how can we make the energy system affordable and clean energy? Means clean energy means it will not pollute the environment. So access to electricity in poorer countries has begun to accelerate energy efficiency continues to improve and renewable energy makes impressive gains. So we need renewable energy. That is uh, energy from sun, energy from water, energy from ocean, ocean wave or energy from the nuclear power. This type of energy does not pollute the uh, environment too much. Okay, so this is safe and clean and that's why this, this is sustainable. So we can uh, uh, use uh, this system that is, uh, uh, renew um, uh, I mean, renewable energy system to, we need to develop these systems. And also through this system, you can uh, supply the electricity to the remote areas. For example, if it is an island, then you cannot uh, uh, transmit power uh, uh, through the ocean to that island so you can install a uh, mini grid in in that island using the solar uh, um, uh, power uh, then you can install that uh, electricity and give electricity to that island in many countries including bangladesh i have in bangladesh i have seen many islands are uh, 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 electrified that is island has electricity connection access to electricity people have the access to electricity through the solar system so uh, we can provide the, it but uh, if you consider the fossil fuel or through the national grid if you want to supply the electricity to that island it is very uh, difficult it is very difficult due to the long distance and through the uh, ocean um, uh, taking the cable it is very difficult so uh, solar home system is very much uh, useful in those areas uh, so, OBE has now become a central feature in the accreditation process of the engineering degrees and other degrees as well, offered by the several institutions of higher learning uh, worldwide. And the assessment and evaluation of a student's learning outcomes are the general criteria set by various types of accreditation bodies. That is, OBE has been adopted as the uh, criteria, as one of the important criteria to assess whether this program will be accredited or not. And this has been found uh, in the ABET in USA and uh, Engineers Australia in Australia, ESC, that is Engineering Accreditation Council in uh, Malaysia. And in Bangladesh also, we, uh, we have uh, adopted OBE through the Board of Accreditation of, for Engineering and Technical Education, BAET. So BAET working uh, under the IEB, Institution of Engineers Bangladesh. So, all these are voluntary organizations 
and also the universities should come to the bodies uh, or agencies uh, voluntarily no one can force you to go for accreditation but you have to um, uh, go for your own interest that you want your programs uh, be accredited so that it is recognized by the other universities of other countries or uh, employers uh, recognize so when uh, any accreditation agency go to any university or any program for accreditation this uh, actually look at the uh, uh, look at uh, whether the program is uh, adopt uh, using the obe system to uh, design their curriculum, to assess their students, or to assess uh, the outcomes of their graduates. Uh, all these uh, features are centered around the OBE. So OBE is a process that involves the assessment and evaluation practices in education to reflect the attainment of expected learning outcome. And uh, they want to see whether uh, the graduates have uh, achieved some mastery in their uh, respected area. So uh, OBE is the process that focuses at achieving certain specified outcomes. And that outcomes are set by the program itself, not by the accreditation bodies. So OBE education is not what we teach. Actually, what uh, we want to measure what the students are learning. In a nutshell, it is a learner-centric learner approach in, the, in any education, not only tertiary, in any education system. It is a learning, a learner centric approach. So, outcomes is the main. So outcomes actually, it, is, it may be called attributes. Uh, uh, these are the key things that the students should understand and be able to do, or the qualities they should develop. And that is why we need to change our program structure and curricula. And uh, we have to design it in such a way so that the students can achieve those capabilities or goals they should develop. So I, am, I will speak uh, some of the important slides. Uh, import, uh, some of the slides, uh, those are not so important, but I will discuss mainly uh, which is, which is uh, needed. And uh, this uh, slide actually shows you uh, what uh, are input, uh, output, and outcome. What are the differences? So, uh, for example, you have a chicken and some masalas and oil, uh, cooking oil, and you can prepare the uh, uh, roast and uh, then uh, this shows the outcome or uh, this shows the actually sorry this shows the output that is you, uh, from this uh, uh, figure you can see that okay it is a good uh, chicken roast maybe it is uh, tasty but when you tested it or evaluated it you see that uh, okay it does not have enough salt it may be so hot that you cannot uh, keep it in your mouth so uh, this is actually the outcome. So the measurement, you can get whether the outcome is proper or not. Or uh, without the test, without the examination, without the investigation, you cannot test. So output is what is created at the end of the process. So process is done, cooking process is done, output is obtained. But the performance level, or actually what what you have made, is it is to be measured when you do some assessment or do some evaluation. So you, you should have some performance indicator. Like for this case, your indicator is whether it is salty, too much salty, too much hot. This way you can, or whether it is uh, boiled properly. Uh, so this is the uh, parameters uh, through which you can uh, measure actually its effectiveness. And in case of education, how do you say the output? Your graduates are your outputs. That is, if you have a graduate with a graduation certificate or transcript, you can understand that, okay, uh, it is the output that is he is graduated. He is a graduate. But how can you measure the effectiveness of this graduate? If the graduate has certain skills, say, for example, engineering, he or she has some engineering skills, then we can uh, uh, give some projects or employ him a project, then he can work in that project, then you can understand that he has an outcome. Or he has a good communication skill, he has a leadership skill, he has he is ethically sound. For example, you uh, uh, have uh, uh, conducted an ethical course, say for example, engineering ethics course, and a, a student got, say, got a plus in that course. 
So you understand that it is the output. That is, he got a plus. He is very bright student. He, he is knowledgeable on ethical issues. So he is uh, good. Uh, and it is his output. But if you employ him, and right after the employment, he is taking, he has started taking bribes. Uh, <laughs> that means he is not ethically sound. So it is his outcome. He, he may got a plus, he, his output is, he looks good, but, but his outcome is worse. It is far from <laughs> the, uh, uh, far from his actual output. So his output is uh, A plus, but his outcome is not good because he is not ethically sound. He is taking bribe from uh, his uh, uh, customers or something like that. Okay. And traditional education system actually uh, uh, paid little attention to whether or not the students uh, are uh, get, getting uh, or achieving their outcomes or attaining their outcomes. Uh, those were only CGPA driven. That is, if CGPA is good or grade is good, A plus, so they understood that the students uh, are good graduates, but they actually do not measure the actual outcome of the students. That's why traditional system has uh, some lackings or pitfalls. Uh, and uh, they also uh, give less emphasis on communication skills, interpersonal skills, analytical skills. These skills are called soft skills, uh, apart from the other technical skills. So uh, 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 gradually, uh, we have moved to the outcome-based education system. And uh, this is the result uh, obtained from a, a Malaysian survey. The uh, survey was done maybe in 2015. And uh, in that survey, it was shown that uh, the, what the employers demand in a Likert scale of one to five. So one means not at all important and five means extremely important. So what uh, uh, the employers emphasize is on the ability to verbally communicate with persons inside and outside the organization. That is, this is a, uh, this is a uh, soft skill. Uh, they emphasized in out of five, they gave uh, 4.63. This, uh, this was uh, done on uh, um, uh, maybe uh, around uh, uh, lots of employers. You can see it in the National Association of Colleges Employees uh, on Job Outlook in, uh, published in 2013. And uh, uh, the survey result shows that uh, technical knowledge skills gi uh, were given uh, less importance than the soft skills. So the soft skills are team, team spirit of teamwork decision-making skills, problem-solving skills, planning, organization, priori prioritizing your work. So what you can do uh, uh, in your job. So technical skills also given important, but this uh, is less than four, around three, uh, four, three point nine. So uh, present employers, what they want, we should give, import, uh, give uh, importance on that, while we, the educators, teach our students. So you can see the job advertisement. I have collected some of the job advertisement from the websites uh, in, in London. You can see they want Java developer, that is software engineer or computer scientist they want. And their requirements, in their requirements or additional skills they want, you can see problem resolution and mindset, ability to work with figures, charts, graphs, to, uh, and to analyze the information. So they want these types of abilities from our graduates, analytical mindset, excellent written and verbal communication skills. So these soft skills they uh, emphasize on. And some of the Bangladeshi uh, job uh, advertisements are also uh, taken. And you can see the employers are not looking only to the academic excellence through grades or GPA. They are giving more importance on the candidates' actual skills and other soft skills like problem solving, decision making skills, leadership skills, uh, writing skills, reading skills, etc. So many skills. And these are the uh, various advertisements that I have collected Okay, uh, from various uh, Bangladeshi job sites. And you can see uh, all these uh, advertisements actually, uh, mainly they are emphasizing on the soft skills with technical skills also. So we need to develop the uh, graduates in that perspective and uh, this is another data that i uh, have collected from the internet 
uh, that is uses us college students feel that they have knowledge and skills needed for the workforce that is only 34 percent that is rest of the students that is majority students not uh, think that they have gathered knowledge and skills needed for their uh, work and environment and in indian engineering students uh, are placed in jobs after graduation only 50 percent that is 50 percent are out of the job market why because they do not have enough uh, technical knowledge and skills as well as other soft skills and these are uk uk employers these are from the employer's perspective that they believe the students after leaving the school with sufficient digital skills uh, they do not have enough digital skills uh, these are the thinking of the employers so it, we need to develop their skills and this is the uh, apple ceo tim cook or what he has mentioned there is a mismatch between the skills that are coming out of colleges and what the skills are that we believe we need in the future that is uh, employers are thinking that graduates should come with uh, these, 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 these skills but universities are producing the graduates without those skills so there is a mismatch the skill set gap between them so we need we need to develop such system and that's why we need obe so that we can measure the outcome and we can see what has happened so the two main purposes of obe uh, actually informs its underlying philosophy in the um, in a book written by bill speedy dr william bill speedy in 1994, his book name is Success for Learners. And he uh, emphasized on the two main purposes. One is ensuring that all learners should be equipped with knowledge, competence, and qualities that are needed to be successful after they exit their educational system. And number two is the structuring and the operating programs of the university so that those outcomes can be achieved and maximized for all learners. So, Always it is written for all learners. So we have to emphasize on all learners that we take the students uh, during admission. So we, we should take the students, admit the students, and all the students should be given opportunities so that they can earn the required qualities, required knowledge, skills, competencies they can earn. And then we should measure also the outcomes properly. So these are uh, these are the four, uh, benefits that we can have uh, from the OBE. Uh, OBE curriculum are more directed and coherent. We can improve the learning of the graduates, and there are some defined graduate attributes. Graduates are more relevant to industry and other stakeholders. Man well managed education system curriculum is more job focused. Students can achieve the skills required for engineering profession, increase in institutional effectiveness, enhance accountability, and CQI process is there. That is, uh, uh, if uh, the OBE system is there, they, then there should be a continuous quality improvement process. If it is not there, then we cannot say that it is a good uh, uh, system. And in Bangladesh, BAETE, that is uh, Bangladesh, uh, in Bangladesh, we call it Board of Accreditation for Engineering and Technical Education. They have adopted OD, OBE in their new accreditation manual from 1st of July, 2017. And uh, whoever apply after this time, they have to apply for the OBE based system. And I am one of the program evaluator that uh, on the electrical engineering track, that is, if any electrical engineering or BSc in electrical and electronic engineering program apply, or electronics and telecommunication engineering program apply to BAETE for accreditation, then I, I may be selected uh, as the program evaluator. And uh, I, I am uh, working on some of the programs in Bangladesh. Uh, so I have some knowledge and I have some training on this. That's why I, I and I gave uh, some uh, training to the faculty members as well. Recently, uh, Bangladesh has uh, formed another thing that is called Bangladesh National Coalitions, uh, National Qualifications Framework, BNQF. And under this framework, they have also adopted, and these are the education system level, you can see, uh, and you can found, find it in the um, uh, reference website that I have shown. And under this BNQF, uh, Bangladesh uh, has uh, formed uh, 
a council, accreditation council uh, named Bangladesh Accreditation Board or Bangladesh Accreditation Council. In short, it is called BIC. So this board uh, has also adopted OBE uh, to accredit the program. But BIT works for the engineering education program, but BIC works for uh, all types of education and uh, all types of education systems are shown from one to 12 level. And uh, BIC uh, also works under the University Grants Commission of Bangladesh and University Grants Commission actually controls the all the public and private universities in Bangladesh. So uh, as per BNF, course, course learning outcomes should be uh, should be based on upon the outcome based education or OBE system, which focuses on learning outcomes of a student. And program curriculum must have uh, an outcome based system and uh, be consistent with the NQF. BNQF. And uh, as per BAETE, they have when they have adopted the uh, 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 I mean when they have adopted. Uh, the uh, quality education uh, criteria uh, uh, for OBE, they have had, uh, included these four new criteria, that is PEO, PO, uh, CQI, and interaction with the industry. These uh, four criteria, new criteria were added in the OBE manual. And uh, this, uh, with this, as, as six long criteria was there in the previous curriculum, but they have uh, included the uh, knowledge profile, complex engineering, profile and complex engineering activities issues as well. And uh, this is the process of the previous system. That is, uh, we have a desired output, then we get the actual output, but there is no measurement process and uh, comparison process. So we have now measurement and comparison process. So we can uh, check whether this uh, is getting the actual output, graduates are attaining these outcomes or not. And this is the system of outcome based. So uh, if uh, we get, uh, find any mismatch, then we can minimize the gap by revising the curriculum or the revising the outcome or de revising the teaching learning process. So um, in the conventional four year program, what we did actually uh, uh, in the past, that is the uh, role of the faculty member was to study and uh, teach the grad students and uh, graduates are prepared and they apply their knowledge in the working environment, but we do not measure it. Now, uh, new model is uh, a faculty member teach and uh, industry, mem industry uh, representatives are, are also included and they apply, uh, they give their inputs and uh, uh, from there we can sharpen the knowledge and then we can uh, uh, get uh, our graduates ready to, uh, for, for the working environment. And they have uh, some skills. We, we expect that with this. And to the OBE, there is a, a paradigm shift happening. So grade oriented to outcomes oriented, content based to ability based, and teacher oriented to student centered uh, shifting has been possible to done through this OBE process. And there are major two types of OBE. One is called outcome. Uh, that is, uh, outcomes are the attributes that are the key things that the students should uh, understand and be able to do, or the qualities they should be able to develop. And uh, we should measure uh, it from the coursework through some assessment and evaluation process. And the second thing is the performance indicator. We should have some performance indicator that we need to understand whether the uh, evaluation is uh, properly made or not. Uh, so OB actually addresses the following key questions. Uh, what do we want that our students should be able to do? And how can we best help our students to achieve this? How will we know whether the students have achieved it and how do we close the loop for further improvement? So there are various uh, variations of the OBE. OBE means outcome-based education, and OBC means outcome-based curriculum. So the uh, first question that is what the student should be able to do that can be addressed through this curriculum design. And then we should make proper teaching learning environment, OBLP. So how to make the student achieve this outcome? So we have to design a proper teaching learning. And after that, we should have some assessment process 
how to measure the uh, uh, measure the students uh, that the students have achieved it. And uh, this is the this is the OBA outcome based assessment. Uh, and uh, uh, this we have three components in the OBE. Uh, these are course outcomes, program outcomes, and program education objectives. Course outcomes are the outcomes that uh, students address and these address actually the abilities that the student should be able to attain after the completion of his or her course. And uh, if course outcomes are achieved, then automatically program out outcomes are achieved because course outcomes are linked to the program outcomes. And program outcomes uh, are the outcomes that uh, uh, at, uh, that can address the abilities uh, that should be attained upon the graduation. That is right after the completion of the four-year engineering program, what the should be able to achieve. And program education objectives actually address uh, what the graduate uh, should be able to achieve after the three to five years up, upon his graduation. And there are various variations in uh, Bangladesh, we call it pro program education objectives, but in USA it is called PO program objectives, but this is synonymous. And uh, in Bangladesh, we call it program outcomes and also Washington Accord. I will mention it later. They call it program outcomes, but uh, in USA and ABET, it, call, it is called the student outcomes or ESOs. And uh, in Bangladesh, we call it course learning outcome or course outcomes. But in ABET, it is called integrated learning outcomes, ILO. So there are various variations, but uh, this uh, terminology shown by oblique is uh, similar. And this is the OBE model. We take the fresh graduates, or uh, sorry, fresh students uh, are admitted into the program. And then they are given with a curriculum which has the courses. And each course has uh, course outcomes. And the program has uh, some objectives. And course outcomes are mapped with WK, CP, and EA, that is knowledge profile, complex problem solving skills, and complex uh, engineering activities skills. And they are given with reference book, textbooks, and uh, class notes. And there should be some teaching learning activities and assessment evaluation process. And after attaining the CO, three CO, they can attain the PO. And we should measure the, what is our expected PO and what is actual PO that we have obtained, that our graduates have obtained. And after upon com comparison of this, if there is any mismatch, then we can redesign our curriculum, we can uh, uh, revise our CO, or we can revise our mapping or alignment, or we can change the textbook, and we can change the teaching learning process, or we can change the assessment evaluation process. We have to check and we have to uh, revise accordingly. And upon graduation, graduates enter into the job market, they get some job training, job experiences. And after that, they can achieve uh, or attain the program education objectives. And we have some expected PEOs in our program. And these are compared. And if this is, uh, uh, there is a mismatch upon comparison, we can change this or we can change this program outcome. So there is a CQI our continuous quality improvement process is there and we can change it every time uh, uh, after regular intervals. So this is the OBE and this is uh, another uh, system. Uh, we have uh, three stages. One is planning stage, another is uh, the implementation stage, and third one is the assessment and evaluation stage. So this we can do this and uh, to do this, we can see that plan in the planning stage, we should think what do I want my students to be able to do as a result of my teaching. So when I am teaching, I should plan something and uh, we sh I should have some expectations or expected outcome. And after that, we should go for implementation that it, we should do it through some teaching learning activities and uh, a proper teaching learning activities should be adopted. And after that, uh, the students will um, get the lectures, instructional technologies, uh, uh, some uh, techniques that you can see and uh, some laboratory activities if it is uh, engineering program or science-based program. And assessment we should do, can my students do what I want them able to do? That is, we now assess and evaluate through some test, through some survey, or through some classroom evaluation or continuous evaluation techniques. So we should check uh, this learning outcome. And learning outcome should be uh, maybe the uh, outcome program outcome 
uh, instructor's goal, and this should be made based on that taxonomy, uh, Bloom's taxonomy. And this is the OB hierarchy. OB, uh, our university or institution must have some mission vision, and under the vision, uh, university we have school department, and uh, school and department should have vision and mission, but it should be aligned. And then we have program. That a department we have several programs, uh, and each program should have PTOs, PTOs, and COs. And then we should start evaluation. And you, you see the design process is from top to bottom, but evaluation process from bottom to top. That is, we should design down and deliver up. So we should uh, uh, first evaluate the outcome, and accordingly, we should map it accordingly so that program outcome, program education objectives are achieved, and also departmental or school level or institution level vision is achieved. So in Bangladesh, BIT has fixed uh, some uh, program outcomes, so we can directly use those program outcomes. We do not need to formulate, but some uh, agencies do not uh, uh, enforce some uh, program outcomes. Uh, you have to design by yourself. So we have some roles from several stakeholders while we go for implementation. So these are the roles uh, required from the management level, that is uh, management and faculty members uh, should have uh, will force faculty members uh, uh, who, uh, should have willingness uh, to work beyond the traditional office hours because a lot of activities are now needed during the assessment process, evaluation process, and CQI process. And high degree of supervision should be done by the department chair. Otherwise, uh, faculty members may uh, give the wrong information and wrong assessment may be done. And office space is required. IT involvement is required because uh, this uh, data management is not possible manually. We, we need software. And the lecture should be continuously changing. And flexibility in distribution of resources are also required. So we need space. We need time. We need monetary. So uh, without the management involvement, without the management, uh, uh, I mean, commitment, if we cannot implement it in our university. And uh, faculty members need to be trained on pedagogical skills, scientific skills, IT skills, and management skills. And also, we have a component of the capstone design project that should uh, be uh, that skill should be developed uh, by the faculty member. So they need, they need training, and also we need the. Uh, uh, help from or cooperation from the students as well. They must be active in the class. Uh, they must be committed to learning and they should have some ethical standards. And these are the uh, some of the components uh, you can see uh, or items that you need by the faculty members. Uh, so uh, they should review the PEOs, POs and courses structure and syllabus of, the, of their respective courses and teach the relevant subjects, uh, conduct relevant tutorials, laboratory experiences, and so on. These are the many issues that we need uh, to be done by the faculty members. And uh, there are some uh, roles uh, that are to be played by the students. Okay, they need to know their program outcomes, program objectives, course outcomes, and they should uh, uh, exert their effort to achieve uh, or attain their uh, outcomes or uh, objectives. And uh, these are uh, the expectations from our students, what are expected from the students under OB. So they should be uh, able to do more challenging tasks. They should write the project proposal, a uh, custom design project um, they should uh, uh, complete. And they should be more creative and, and be able to analyze and synthesize their information and able to plan and organize tasks able to work in a team. So these skills need to be developed during their uh, process. So there are some challenges. Uh, mainly it is a, uh, mainly it is a, uh, it is a paradigm shift uh, for uh, to achieve outcome and to, uh, to maintain the quality. And to do this, we need to maintain fundamentals so while encourage inclusion of latest technology advancement in the curriculum. So many people are not uh, embarrassed with the uh, technology so they need to be trained in this uh, respect in this respect and allow the academic innovation and creativity so department chair should be more active and vibrant in the department and variety 
of modes of delivery method that is teaching learning methods are needed in this process so uh, we need to train our faculty members in this perspective and we have to know how to ensure the mastery over not only the domain of knowledge but also over the knowledge skills and attitudes that required for the 21st century and these are the required activities for the faculty members they need to define the objectives and goals define the educational outcome identify the stakeholders in their involvement uh, and their involvement in articulating and evaluating the education objectives and outcome and uh, they have uh, having a well designed curriculum mapping the curriculum curricular courses how they contribute to the educational objectives and outcomes and develop developing a CQI process and this is the CQI process so we have COs POs and PEOs these are the three basic components of OBE and we have to have COs POs and PEOs we have to measure or assess and analyze so without the measurement and analysis we cannot uh, do the improvement so we have to assess and then analyze say for example COs are not achieved by the students so we have to think why the uh, students did not achieve those COs so we have to take appropriate action to change the COs and when COs are changed, changed POs and PEOs will automatically change so they are interlinked and also we should measure the POs so CO should be measured every semester PO should be measured uh, every four years upon completion of the graduation uh, but program has to measure every year but uh, uh, for one batch or one cohort of students, we have to measure it uh, every uh, four years. And uh, the PEO should be measured uh, uh, upon graduation of that cohort after three to five years uh, upon their job. In, uh, uh, job. Okay. So we already have defined what is accreditation. Accreditation is a process by educational programs or institutions uh, that are uh, uh, required to determine whether they meet certain standards or quality. And this uh, process actually recognizes and acknowledges the value of transforming a student into a, into a capable engineer with some knowledge of fundamentals and other soft skills. So there are some objectives uh, for uh, accreditation. Uh, and uh, BIAT Bangladesh uh, in BAT is a provisional secretary member of the Washington Accord. Uh, so what is uh, needed, we need the graduate engineers with some capability so that if the graduate in, uh, engineers have graduated from any accredited engineering program, then they can become the member of the professional engineering body like Institution of Engineers in Bangladesh or in, uh, they may be the member of the Engineers Mobility Forum. But to do this, uh, in university uh, uh, universities of a particular country should have uh, OB-based accreditation program so that they can uh, become the member of the WMF. And to make their, their graduates to become the member of the WMF, we need to be included as a signatory member, full signatory member. Currently, there are many full signatory members of these accords. And for the uh, BS engineering, we have uh, Washington Accord, which was signed by, in Washington, D.C. of USA in uh, 1989 uh, for the four-year undergraduate degree program. But for diploma, engineering or uh, engineering technicians and com computing and IT professionals. We have other three accords, Dublin Accords, Sydney Accord, or Seoul Accord. And Bangladesh is a provisional signatory of the Washington Accord since 2016 and hoping to be the full signatory by 2022, uh, that is next year. And uh, Washington Accord actually uh, assists the mobility of the engineers. Uh, that is uh, uh, when our, uh, signatory member countries in grad, uh, engineering graduates uh, want to get a job into that uh, other signatory countries uh, engineering job then they can get it easily and these are the sydney and dublin accord i will not mention it and the washington accord uh, is an international agreement uh, uh, for professional engineering academic degrees only for the engineering academic degrees this accord is signed and only for the bs engineering degrees and they have adopted OBE, that is outcome-based education approach uh, for the program accreditation. That's why uh, the signatory countries and uh, provisional signatory countries are uh, switching their education systems to the OBE-based approach. And these are the 12 uh, P POs, program outcomes defined by the uh, Washington Accord. So we call them WA1, WA12. 
So these are the keywords and these are the descriptions you can see. So if any, any country wants to accredit their program, they should follow these guidelines. They, they should maintain these guidelines, but they can uh, uh, design these uh, program outcomes as per their own way, but uh, the program, program outcomes should be there. So in short, the w Washington Accord is an agreement that establishes the equivalence of uh, other countries accredited professional engineers program and that the accredited engineering graduates are recognized by the other signatory countries. That is, if the graduates of one country or from one signatory country goes to the another signatory country to uh, get a job, they can get the engineering job directly. They don't need to sit for the, uh, uh, pro, uh, I mean, any uh, placement examination, job placement examination, they don't need. Okay, and also this uh, agreement uh, accord, uh, shows that the possible employment of the engineers in those countries without further examination. And uh, graduate in BSc engineers actually solve the complex problems that I also mentioned earlier. That, uh, that's why to solve these complex problems, uh, BSc engineer requires in-depth knowledge that allows the fundamental base first principles analytical approach. So this is a BSc engineering problem, but diploma engineers or technicians do not need uh, this uh, in-depth knowledge. And these are the um, uh, signatory countries. And in 1989, only seven countries signed this accord. Uh, of them, these are Australia, Canada, USA, like this. And uh, later, uh, and New Zealand also is there as the first signatory countries. And later in different uh, years, as you can see, they were admitted as the full signatory countries. And uh, uh, in, in last uh, year, Pakistan was also, uh, in, uh, sorry, in 2017, Pakistan uh, was included as the full uh, signatory countries of the last country. And then uh, we have uh, uh, provisional signatory uh, status of Bangladesh, Costa Rica, Mexico, Peru, and Philippines. And gradually they will be uh, in that if they can fulfill the criteria set by the Washington Accord. And these are the blue color shows the worldwide data that is uh, the countries, those are included already. Uh, so you can see the Australian, um, uh, Australia and New Zealand is there. Already America is uh, covered by US and Canada and uh, Asia and Europe is mainly covered by UK, Russia. Uh, uh, and also India also adopted but uh, it, it was published uh, before India was included, Pakistan was included, uh, 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 South Africa is included from uh, uh, the African uh, continent, but uh, South America is not included uh, right now. Okay, so more countries have included, but this uh, figure is not updated in the IEA website. So uh, uh, for this, uh, we have an alliance also, International Engineering Alliance. So uh, these are some history and it, Actually, IEA uh, uh, runs this forum, Engineers Mobility Forum, the uh, EMF. So to get EMF, we have to become the full signatory of the Washington Accord. Then we can uh, become the full member of the IEA and w, uh, EMF also. And Bangladesh has also another body called the Bangladesh Professional Engineers Registration Board, BPERB. Uh, and this BPERB, uh, is the, uh, has become the full member because we have many professionals, engineering professionals in our country. And these are the um, uh, updated map uh, where we have, uh, uh, we, we have included the member countries, full member countries, Washington Accord member countries, ENAA, NBEA. So there are many agencies or accords are there now in uh, place. Uh, so, that many countries are member or provisional members. These are shown in this uh, worldwide data. So for designing the engineering program, what are the requirements? Main requirements, we have to provide them education through knowledge and understanding, and we have to give them training uh, to develop their skills. And to give education, we need the cognitive domain of the blue taxonomy, and also uh, some psychomotor domain skills and affective domain skills are needed to uh, provide them training as well. So uh, these are the uh, OBE curriculum development stage. Uh, uh, we already, I have mentioned that institution should have the vision and mission. Then we have the school level, vision, mission, department level, vision, mission. Then we have program education objectives, program outcomes, course learning outcomes, that is COs. And then we have assessment 
and we have to measure this assessment uh, for course outcome program outcomes program education objectives and then we have some continuous program improvement and this is shown what are the stages uh, we should do while uh, designing the um, program outcome uh, we should uh, take the input from the stakeholders and who are the stakeholders the stakeholders are teachers students university and uh, also we have uh, these are internal stakeholders and external stakeholders are potential employers or industry advisory body any regulatory body alumni of uh, program they are the uh, and also the parents uh, they are the uh, external stakeholders we have to take their inputs to design our program and program outcome and also to design our uh, course outcomes we need to take the uh, help from our teachers and um, also uh, we need to take the help from our technicians uh, for example laboratory uh, in, uh, staff uh, when we uh, conduct the laboratory experiment we need to take uh, their help and course assessment for them we have to take the uh, help from teachers and students because the students will appear in the exam then we have program evaluation and uh, for program evaluation we can uh, invite uh, the external stakeholders like employers industry advisory body regulatory body or any external assessor or external member from other countries and uh, how to set the vision mission i will not describe but uh, you understand what is vision and mission vision actually is a statement that actually uh, shows uh, in which uh, or at which place a uh, university or institution wants to go and a mission uh, actually states what uh, or which way or how uh, the institution or that program wants to realize their vision or wants to reach to their vision so these are some examples of vision mission and uh, since i am working as the uh, in a, in a, in the southeast university so i have uh, shown this vision mission these are uh, this can be obtained from our website as well uh, so uh, and these are the vision and mission of the um, the program so you can uh, see the vision is actually written in just uh, in a in a straight line uh, in a sentence um, uh, no paragraph no uh, bullet point but mission statements are written as a bullet point so they, uh, there are several mission statements so these are the uh, steps or process through which we will uh, try to achieve the uh, mission and also we should have program education objectives i have mentioned and these are the uh, program education objectives of uh, SEU and this PEO should be mapped in mission statements. So we have six institutional mission statements. So I have written them in short MS1 to MS6 and they are uh, mapped. And how the mapping is done, we should read each mission statement and uh, you should check how to map it or how to correlate it with the program uh, education objective statement. And there may be three to four program education objectives. So uh, the, that, that should be defined by the respective program. And uh, one, three means degree of correlation. One means low, two means moderate, and three means high or strong correlation. And there may be multiple mapping of one, three, or two multiple mission statements. And then we have to map the mission statements of the uh, program with the program education objectives. That is PEO. So you have seen that there are four PEOs. So these are mapped with these uh, five uh, mission statements. And uh, these may be also mapped uh, with as per the degree of correlation. But if it, it, we did not show any one, because if it is one that is a low, uh, low correlation, then uh, we do not need to map it. We need to map it if it is uh, moderately or strongly correlated with any mission statements and uh, PEO statements. So there may be uh, knowledge, skills, and attitude distribution in the curriculum in different four ways from first year to fourth year. It may be linear mapping. It may be knowledge, initial space. In the first year or second year course, you give more knowledge, less skills. And uh, in the second, uh, uh, and uh, uh, skills uh, are, more skills are given. Uh, so, but the more um, um, distribution ratio is 70, 30. That is, uh, knowledge is given more, and the skills and attitude is less. Uh, uh, but uh, the distribution among uh, uh, the four-year uh, curriculum, it may be separated. 
it it may be less or more. So sometimes uh, I think that since these are engineering programs, so skills should be given uh, uh, more skills should be given and attitude should be developed towards their jobs, uh, towards their uh, program uh, later on uh, in the third year or fourth year. But it is the, it depends on the respective program uh, what uh, you should choose for your uh, institution. And after uh, choosing, uh, you have to choose the appropriate taxonomy domain and each program outcome should be mapped with the taxonomy domain. And there are three domains in Bloom's taxonomy, cognitive domain, affective domain, and psychomotor domain. And these are the uh, one typical mapping, but it, it can be mapped by respective uh, uh, program accreditation agency. And if they enforce it and you are in a country, then you have to follow that to get the accreditation. So BAETE uses the 12 POs of the Washington Accord and they enforce uh, all the programs to follow those 12 program outcomes. And these uh, 12 program outcomes uh, we follow uh, in, uh, in Bangladesh. And uh, these program outcomes are also mapped with the appropriate knowledge domain, uh, like the eight knowledge domains uh, BAET has mentioned or prescribed uh, for program accreditation. And these uh, knowledge profiles are also uh, adopted by the International Engineering Alliance. So BAET is, 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 wants to get the full signatory status from IEEA and Washington Accord. That's why BAET uh, properly follows the guidelines uh, uh, set by the IEEA and Washington Accord. That's why BAET has also adopted all these eight knowledge profiles and they enforces all the programs in Bangladesh to follow this so that uh, they can uh, give accreditation on OBE to these programs. And uh, these are also mapped with the uh, respective, the respective uh, program outcomes uh, by the BAT. So we have to follow this. And uh, there are uh, WP and EA. EA, that is the complex engineering activities, is only uh, mapped to the PO number 10, that is communication skills. And uh, uh, complex engineering problem solving skills, that is WP. These are seven Ps, uh, CP, uh, WPs, and these are mapped with the uh, seven uh, POs. So we have to map this and learn it. So I have mentioned about the Bloom's taxonomy. So Bloom's taxonomy is a set of three hierarchical models used to classify educational learning objectives into levels of complexity and mastery. So these skills are cognitive, that is knowledge level skills. Effective domain is attitude level. So we need to develop the behavioral trait of the graduates. And also we need to develop some uh, hands-on skills. So we need psychomotor domains. Uh, for the engineering graduates and Benjamin Bloom, you know, uh, and US uh, psychologist uh, uh, has uh, suggested, and later on, his student uh, Carl has uh, changed these uh, levels of the cognitive domain. So, uh, I have already mentioned that uh, what is this, and uh, this cognitive domain has uh, six levels from remember to create, and the description of these levels are given, and also. Uh, there are some action parts that we should utilize uh, to design our CO uh, at, use, uh, at uh, any particular level of the cognitive domain. And also we have psychomotor domain and it has some definition and some example and action parts are there. And But psychomotor domain has five levels from imitation to naturalization. And effective domain has uh, one, two, three, four, five levels from receiving to characterization by value. And this has also some action parts, and these action parts should be used while we design our uh, CO. And already I have mentioned that uh, we have several types of outcomes, program outcome, course outcome, chapter outcome like this. And uh, uh, already I have mentioned what is uh, objective and definition, so I will not uh, go detail into this. And you can see the differences between the course objective and course outcome. So while writing this, we should follow this uh, map and I have uh, shown uh, some guidelines here that is while writing the course outcome, you should follow a formula. It's called SMART, S-M-A-R-T. S means specific, that is outcome should be specific to the discipline or your particular course. And this outcome should be measurable. This outcome should be achievable. This outcome should be realistic and this outcome should be time bound. So in short, it is called SMART, S-M-A-R-T. So while making these uh, uh, or preparing these outcomes, you should uh, uh, 
uh, try to uh, avoid some bars because these are not actually any action verb of any of, uh, of the three cognitive domain or any of the levels that were uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, so you see these understand, appreciate, know, learn, aware, familiar, or be familiar with these type of uh, verbs are not measurable verbs. So it, uh, if, if you use these verbs, these will not be measurable. So you cannot uh, write the appropriate course outcome. So to write the course outcome, uh, we should uh, uh, think that uh, what our students should be able to do after completing this course. And based on that, we should uh, write the course outcomes and how to define the course outcome. Uh, I can uh, mention it using this short formula. You have to use an action verb. First, you need to uh, um, think in which domain you want to write this uh, uh, course outcome. And then you should think uh, what should be the level of that domain. So if you think that it is the cognitive domain, then you should think wh whether what is the uh, uh, level. If it is the first level, then the remember uh, is the first level. So you should, you should use uh, that type of action bar from there. If you think that it is at the level six, that means it is the uh, action bar of uh, create level that is uh, designed, uh, such type of bar can be used. So action bar is there, then we should have a condition C, and then we should have a standard. So, we should use uh, this way to write the or prepare the course outcomes of our course. And then in short, we can see that VCS, verb, condition, standard. This should be the formula. So uh, let us see how can we write. So if we write that after, say for example, you are uh, teaching a course named research methodology course. Okay, so you write a, uh, uh, a course uh, outcome like this. A student should be able to design the research. So design is the action verb of the create level of cognitive domain. Okay, so design research. So you, you have given the uh, action verb, but uh, nothing else. So this design is very poor. That is condition and standard is not given. DCS formula is not followed. And now it is a little bit better. After completing this course, the student should be able to independently design and carry out design, carry out this type of words are related to the uh, action verb at the cognitive uh, domains, sixth level, fifth level. And what type of research they should do? Experimental and correlational research. So this is a condition. That is what type of research they will be able to do. This is experimental and correlational research. So it, it, it sounds better, but there is no standard here. And now it is the best. The student should be able to independently design and carry out experimental and correlational research that yields valid results. So you can see these uh, contains the design or carry out. These are the verbs, action verbs. The condition is experimental and correlational. And research is what uh, research results. What is the outcome? That is the standard. You should produce the valid results. If the results are not valid, but you conducted a research on experimental and correlational uh, topic, uh, but that does not produce the valid result. So uh, your outcome is not achieved. That's why outcome should be very specific, very specific and very pinpointed. Okay, and so course outcome of any subjects are statements of learning achievement upon completion of a course. And these are some examples. Um, I, I teach sometimes electronics one, so I have to prepare. So you see uh, the colored uh, verbs, these are apply level verb, apply the basic concept, explain the construction and operation. So this is understand level, simulate. Uh, this is also apply level verb. And apply, when you use the apply keyword as the action verb, then this is in the apply level. But design, test, analyze, these are actually verb in the design level or create level of the cognitive domain. And after preparing the course outcomes for several courses, you have to map it with the respective program outcomes. And after the mapping, you can see some of the program outcomes are mapped to some of the courses, but some program outcomes may, may not be. 
So in that case, you need to revise some COs of some courses, and you may uh, program teacher may request some of the course teachers to uh, revise their CO so that these PO7 and PO7 are mapped to some of the courses so that all the POs can be achieved by the graduates. If all the POs are not achieved, then you cannot get the accreditation. So already I have mentioned what is assessment and evaluation. So assessment is a process to identify, collect, and prepare the data. And evaluation is the process that can integrate that data, whether the achievement is made, has been made by the students. And the assessment, uh, to do the assessment, we have some assessment tools. And assessment can be done at the program level and also at the course level. So at the course level, actually the course teacher, that is the faculty members, do the assessment. And at the program level, usually the program chair or program coordinator do these types of assessment. So P and C are mentioned in uh, at the right of the tools. So a student survey, PR evaluation, a student portfolio, so many things you can test uh, and uh, see uh, and check uh, what tools you should use. Not all tools you need. You need one, two, or three tools to do your program assessment or the course assessment. And there are so many tools. There are, there are a list of tools. I do not want to read out all these tools. Uh, and uh, as I have mentioned, that uh, assessment should be done uh, at institutional level, program level, and course level. And there should be different types of uh, assessment tool, a direct assessment tool, or, uh, and indirect assessment tool. And uh, uh, you need to set some performance criteria and rubric set also for your assessment. Okay. What happened? Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Uh, participants, if any questions are there, you can ask. We do have another four or five minutes. So I have some to show just uh, based on this rubric. Uh, what is uh, actually rubrics? Rubrics is a kind of assessment tool, and uh, rubrics have three components: dimensions, scale, and descriptors. And uh, uh, why rubrics are is used? I I, I can skip these slides, but uh, you can see the KPIs are there. Uh, there are four KPIs. Uh, I want to explain one. Uh, fulfill team duties and uh, contribute to teamwork. This uh, rubric is used to assess the PO9, that is teamwork. Okay, teamwork and group work. So uh, it can be uh, in the four scale or five scale. We call it Likert scale. And maybe one may be called unsatisfactory, two is developing stress, three is satisfactory, four is exemplary. So if you use five scale, you may say uh, very poor, poor, uh, then average, uh, good, then uh, excellent. In this way, you can define. And these are the levels. And these are the level descriptors. So when you assign one to a student, they, they should know how to assign one. Why did you give him one out of four? So if any member does not perform any team duties, assigned to, the, uh, assigned to that student, particular student, you give one. Then developing steps that perform little teamwork, perform all duties, but not all, near the all duties, then it will give three. And if uh, any student performed all team duties assigned uh, uh, as a team role, uh, then you can give four. So in this way, there are, in the teamwork, we can have communication. We can uh, need uh, uh, some uh, research-related information gathering. And uh, there, there may be some timeline. And there may be some report writing or presentation issues. So this all should be evaluated through these rubrics. So this is a cone of learning. Uh, Edgar Dale uh, proposed this, and you can see uh, we can, if we read something, then after two weeks, only 10% we can uh, remember. And uh, if we hear, then we can uh, keep it in our memory uh, only 20%, then 30% uh, can be uh, remembered. Uh, if we uh, see something, and if we hear and see both, then 50%. And if we say, after uh, hearing or seeing or watching, if we say something, then we can uh, uh, remember 70% after two weeks. And if we do also, then we can 
uh, also uh, remember 90% of it. So we have to do that is the key. And we are now in at the fourth industrial revolution stage. So we have to face the challenges of fourth industrial revolution. Uh, all, everything goes into automation. So we have to produce the capable engineers who can face this challenge and adopt to this. Otherwise, they will lose their job. So that's why we need to develop the skills so that they can uh, learn lifelong. And that's why now the Bloom's taxonomy has been reversed uh, uh, in relation to the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, previously, Bloom's taxonomy uh, uh, gave more Im importance on the remembering, understanding, and applying. Now, uh, the emphasis has been reduced, but uh, we give more emphasis uh, on uh, creating, evaluating, and analyzing the data. So these are the, the required skills we need. So we need to produce the graduates with creative skill, uh, and uh, they uh, they should have critical thinking skill and uh, communication skills they should have. So uh, this knowledge should be developed through our education systems. So OB is required for engineering and or any non-engineering program across uh, the various categories and public and private universities in Bangladesh and other parts of the world that, uh, that we uh, should do. And uh, this OB model is also helpful for getting the accreditation and join various uh, alliance for engineering education and other types of education. So adoption of OB will help us to attract students also uh, to our institutions. And we have some recommendations. That is, we need to uh, involve our faculty members in the process from right from the beginning. And faculty members who teach the course must be involved in writing of those course outcomes and mapping it to the relevant POs. Course outcomes cannot be given to the faculty members as a dogma. Concurrent development of the faculty members along with the curriculum development is a must. Faculty members need extensive trainings or workshops before or during the implementation process of OBE. Teaching loads of the faculty members should be reduced because without this, they cannot do this type of uh, tedious job. This is easy job, but this is tedious and time consuming and laborious job. And OB should not be imposed from the top. Faculty members should undertake this responsibility voluntarily because this process is voluntary process. No one enforces you. But if you want to increase your quality, if you, increase, you want to increase, uh, enhance the image of your program or university, then you should adopt it. So faculty members should uh, do this uh, and they should adopt this voluntarily. And uh, the management should help with them cooperate them so that they can uh, help their students to achieve the outcome of the program and also the institution. And faculty members also develop uh, their tools by themselves so that they, they, uh, they feel uh, their ownership in their program. So that's all. Thank you very much uh, for your kind questions. And yeah, that's all my presentation. And uh, now if you have any question, you may ask. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Uh, if you have any questions, those who have joined us via YouTube Live and Facebook Live, you can post your questions there. Also, we'll try to uh, uh, provide the email ID of uh, Dr. Uh, Mohibul, sir. Uh, so you, you can ask directly to them. Uh, before we conclude, I would like to inform all the participants that uh, the whole webinar will be available on our Research Circle YouTube channel. So you can watch there again, and you can share to your friends and colleagues as well. So I guess that's it for today's session. So uh, thank you all the participants uh, for your kind patience and presence. Uh, also at last, uh, uh, thank you so much, Professor and Dr. Mohibul uh, sir, for taking out the time and delivering such a nice session for us. Uh, we hope, uh, another session uh, in the coming future from your side so with the with the due permission of uh, today's speaker i would like to conclude the session here okay so thank you thank you for inviting me also i would like to thank uh, research circle and also thank uh, mr william prot for your uh, kind invitation to me and uh, hopefully we will uh, see again with a new topic in future Thank you once again. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good time and take care. Thank you.